Welcome. You're just seconds away from the Brian Brody Show, where listener participation is strongly encouraged. Well, unless, of course, you're easily triggered, then listener discretion is strongly advised. And if you fall into the latter camp, why don't you just mortal up already? Thanks for listening to the Brian Brody Show. It's time to mortal up. Good afternoon by just knowing Wayne by just a couple of seconds. Welcome to episode 533 of the Brian Brody Show. A day, not to uh, plagiarize a speech, but a day that will live in infamy. Right, Wayne? This is the greatest day in the history of the world to be alive. Now, I know you're saying, Brian, you said yesterday was the greatest day in the history of the world to be alive. And I was right then. And I am super right today. Absolutely. The greatest day in the history of the world to be alive. It's election day. And I'm given a big, oh, I think it's called a raspberry. <clears throat> the 55% of Gen Xers and millennials and everyone else. It's like, <laughs> this is the most stressful. I don't know how I'm going to handle it. This is the most stressful day in my life. I don't know what I'm going to do. Yeah. So just for all of them. Yeah, oh, oh, it'll be okay, Muffin. Okay, Sparkles. Okay, Sparkles. Oh, 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 Sparkles, you'll be okay. Go grab a rattle. So, in any event, Wayne, we have so much to get to today. Right? Today is like I really have to watch the clock, right? Because there's so many cool things going on in the world, right? Or right here where we are in the States. So many cool things going on. You just don't have time to go into it. Now, this first story, Wayne... I want you to know, I am not making any, <laughs> I'm not making any of this up. This actually happened. True. Actually happened to me. So, Wayne, why don't we go ahead and run with her? Because no one's going to believe this happened. And no this one was believe. Franklin County, Ohio. Franklin County, yeah, right. I, I, that's right. For those of you that are trying to figure out where I live, <laughs> yeah, I get death threats all the time. I don't know if you knew that, Wayne. Well, um, Franklin yeah, County is a big county. Pretty big, you know, in and around the capital, which is even more fascinating than me. This didn't happen in Podunk, right? This happened. So hold the graphic for a minute. Let me explain the story. Then you can throw the graphic up. So I get up bright and early as I do every morning. I'm up like five o'clock, right? I do a little bit of breathing, a couple of deep knee bends. Yeah. What, what I call yoga, not Jack Dorsey yoga, right? I'm not carrying a mat around, growing my beard to be the length of Moses. Not that kind of yoga. But I. You know, I, I stretch a little, I do a little things, and I, you know, that's so why I just get ready. So I'm up every morning early. But this morning, I had to get out the door in a hurry because I wanted to be over to the polling place, right, to be there bright and early because I wanted to beat what I thought were going to be the lines. So I get up, I suck down a quick monster, I get all my stuff done, uh, uh, right, and um, out the door. So I'm speeding, which by that, I mean, right? Because you got to watch now, ever since that rapper got arrested for joking in his rap video that he was uh, falsely cashing a bunch of people's uh, paychecks that weren't really him. So, no, I wasn't speeding, but I was damned. I was pushing the speed limit. I was going as fast as the law, right? Because I always obey the vehicle and traffic laws. I was going as fast as the law would allow patrolman who pulled up behind me as I was pulling into the polls, fast as I could go. Let me say hello quickly to Miss Putnam. Miss Putnam, nice to see you, as well as Miss Costello. Nice to see you as well. Thank you so very much for joining us. And I should thank the people over on YouTube, Twitter, you know, here on Facebook, uh, and, you know, iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify. Thank you all so very much. So I go flying over to the polls, and there's like four people ahead of me. Right, so I park the car, get out, and I'm running over to get in my space. So it's like 6.05, maybe. So I know, all right, I got 25 minutes. So I'm listening to everyone around me talk, yucking it up, carrying on, some with masks, some without masks, right? Some just, just everybody. So long about, I don't know, maybe five minutes before it opens, here comes like 
a couple of women and a couple more women and another woman. And these women were really smart in that they deputized their husbands, I'm assuming, or boyfriends, significant others, whatever you want to call them, tomato, tomato. They deputized their boyfriends to go stand in line. So in an instant, in a flash, in a snap of a finger, I went from being number five in line to number nine in line. Right. So I'm not going to complain about it. You know, it's not like it's not like the DMV. Right. Uh, Patricia says you weren't speeding. You were just hurrying. Yes. I like to think of scampering. I was scampering, Patricia, to get over to where we needed to where I needed to vote. Oh, honest to goodness. So I'm thinking, oh, I'm number five in line. I'm texting Ashley and I go, oh, I'm number five in line. No, I'm number eight. I'm, I'm nine in line. She goes, what the heck? What happened? I go, well, everyone's wives are showing up now and they were holding places for them. So now I'm number nine in line, but I'm digging it because there's got to be 250 people behind me. Right. So I'm just like nine. Yes. But it, it won't be like DMV. They'll open right on time. This will be great. I'll be in and out before you know it. Well, of course, they got their training from the Department of Motor Vehicles. So they were like five minutes late opening. Right. Everybody inside scampering around, looking out the window instead of paying attention to what they're supposed to be doing to open on time. They're looking out the window to see how bad the lines are. So we finally get in, finally get in. And the first person comes up to me and says, uh, you, you, you got to stay on these X's, these little blue tape mark X's, right? Wait, like we're in a hallway. The things aren't six feet wide to save your life, but uh, you know, tomato, tomato, like I said, when in Rome. So I go in and uh, I get on my little blue X, like the lemming I've grown to become, right? And so a young man walks up to me and he hands me what you're about to put on the screen. Honest to goodness, I am not making this up. There is no special effects. No, look, if I were going to have special effects, I'd make Wayne do it because he's a master at it. No special effects. This picture is what was actually handed to me as I got in line and, and was funneled down the hallway. Wayne, you have that image? Oh, there you go. Foreign influence. Oh, who is that? Oh. The Bunter Hyden family? Wait a minute. So I get in line. Well, you know, that's interesting that you put that up, Wayne, because maybe the next time they're over there, they could check with some of the some of the big wigs over in China. What's going on? Because here's the first thing I was handed was a pen, right? A little stylus, as you can tell this thing. And I go, oh, what's this for? Didn't even look down at the, at the condom, the wrapper, whatever it is, right? I didn't even see the markings on it. And I said to the young man, oh, what is this? <laughs> what is this for? And he goes, well... It's a stylus for the voting machines. And I go, oh, that's pretty interesting. And he goes, yeah, but uh, the voting machines mysteriously went down last night. They're not working. So I looked back down at this little stylus and I said, well, what is this for? He goes, well, I don't know. We were just told to pass them out, but they, the machines don't work. So I looked down and I go, made in China. We, for our own election, we can't even afford to buy a pen that was made here in the USA, the very pens are made in China, to which the young man, and I'm not going to throw him under the bus, to which the young man says, well, you know, they're the ones that are designed for this machine. And I said, so wait a minute, these pens made in China were designed for a machine. Was that machine made in China? And like a supervisor stand right over, so going, oh, we don't know where the machines were made, sir. Move to the next X. So as I'm moving down this hallway with my made in China pen, I'm now wearing it like a pendant on my shirt, made in China pen. It's just, it's like a beehive, right, Wayne? Everyone's buzzing around. Oh, the machines are down. The machines are down. The machines are down. We don't know what we're going to do. And people are scampering and running and security's going, you got to stay on your ex. I go, do not address me again, whoever you are. Stay on your ex, stay on your ex, stay on your ex. So it's finally my turn now that I'm number nine. It's finally my turn at the door. And I go to open the door, and this is a phone booth. We're lucky if it's <laughs> maybe 24 by 24 feet. We're absolutely lucky if that's how big this place is. So you go up, you show your ID, they find your signature in the book, they compare signatures, this and that, right? So then you make a, a turn to the left, then you wait in another line, and they verify that it's really you. And I go, what are the chances that I've had a, a bout of schizophrenia in the last three feet? I was just over, not three feet, when I turned around at the point to my right, maybe two and a half feet. What's the chance the me that was me two and a half feet ago is a different me than what's me now? I go, sir, we don't know uh, any of that, but do you have your ID? 
So I went through, got my ID back out again, uh, showed it to this young lady, and she hands me a ballot. Now, the ballot, which they had ballots, thank goodness, but she goes, oh, okay, so you just go over to these, these little cubicles over here, fill out your ballot. And I go, great. I go, would you, would you happen to have a pen? She goes, you didn't bring a pen? I go, I got this cool little stylus made in China, uh, but no, I didn't bring a pen. And she goes, oh, well, you can borrow mine, to which point she reaches into her top shirt pocket, a pocket, pulls out her pen, and hands it to me, which was very nice of her, lovely. I don't even want to tell you her name because I don't want to get her in trouble. She hands me her pen. Lovely young lady. Just I, I, was, I was very thankful. So I said, look, I will bring this pen back to you. So now I make my way down this. You talk about the six-foot rule along with my three-second violations. They were going off left and right, right? If there had been like a warning sign, like a dive sign, you know what I mean? That's all that was going on because people were packed. There were people moving everywhere around this place so i finally go okay great i kind of excuse me pardon me excuse me pardon me you know if you could get out of my way i'd super appreciate it coming through coming through and moving security out of the way so i finally get to my cubicle i go and and it says oh make sure you fill these little circles out perfectly i'm thinking to myself really this stylus and i couldn't get off of it wayne because you can't look now i'm thinking to myself the universe is supplying me with my own shtick Giving me my own prop. This is like Gallagher when he used to smash watermelons. Or Tiny Tim with a ukulele. Or any magician on TV that ever pulled a rubber chicken out of a hat. You gave me a stylus for a machine that broke down. And it's made in China. Are you kidding me? Franklin County houses the state capital here in Ohio. And people go, well, why do you always say Ohio stands for, oh, how I'm out of here? We're in the state capital, for God's sakes. You can't make sure your stuff's tight before, wait for it, election day. It's not like a run-up. This is election day, right? Marked in the book, made famous in song and dance in November. You can't even do that. So now I finish meticulously filling out my ballot. Just think to myself, Brian, let it alone, let it alone. Of course, Wayne, I called you, right, to let you know what had just happened to me. I called you. And, uh, 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 and to, to give you an idea of what was going on. And then I thought, well, maybe he's in line. Security's harassing him for talking on the phone, too. So I let it go. So I hung back up. And then I go to stand up. And they go, okay, put your ballot here and put my ballot there. And I turn back. And the same security guard that's just had it out for me since I got in the door comes up and says, sir, you exit over here. I go, look, I borrowed this young lady's pen. She's back over here. I'll be returning the pen that I said that I would. Then you and I will catch up. So I turn away, I walk down, <laughs> I walk down, deliver her a pen, and her eyes are like the size of, 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 of pool balls, right? Like, uh, like if you're shooting pool, they're huge, and they're like focused or just over my left shoulder. I turn around, here's a security guard. I hand her a pen, and I go, brother, get out of my way. You, you don't want to do this. Out of my way. Turn back, hand her a pen, walk myself back through the gauntlet, right? Hit my horn once again so everyone would know. I was coming through, gave him my warning beep, right? I'm coming through, so if you have a six-foot rule or whatever, because it's posted everywhere, six-foot rule. And then I cast my vote, uh, and I left. And, of course, I came out to call you uh, right away. And I think I called my good, another good friend. I don't want to throw her under the bus, but I called her going, look, are you going? You get into the polls, everything good. If anyone gives you a hard time, just call me and put me on speakerphone. I'll take care of it for you. So that was my morning, Wayne. That's what it took to try to place the vote. Now, here's the thing. And we're going to do, I've already blown the time, so who cares? We're going to do a little bit about this. Those poor people in line, I joked yesterday uh, that I hope you brought some snacks and some flasks because you are going to be out there forever. At one point, Wayne, people were bumming pens off each other. I'm sitting here casting a vote. Now, fairness, I had to bum a pen, right? I had to go, hey, can you, can you hook me up for a minute? which is why I felt compelled to take it back. There's people standing around my booth going, hey, you got a pen? You got a pen? I'll take a number two sharpened pencil if you got one. Hey, you got this? You got that? And this was at an election site in Franklin County, the capital of, oh, how I'm out of here. Can you believe it? Made in China. Yeah, Wayne probably fell asleep during my rant. All right, so let's do this. Normally, we would have... Uh, so, oh, there... <laughs> <laughs> He's got his feet up. I love it. You kick it back, relax it, are you? I love it. So 
<laughs> nice socks. Are those new? Did you get those for your birthday? They match your shirt. Um, so that was my day, Wayne, trying to get through. And you know me, I'm like a lab with a shiny object. Once they handed me a pen made in China, I couldn't focus on anything else. My mind was just gone for the rest. <laughs> right? My mind was like, oh, look, he's out of here. Don't even. Why do you even try to talk to him? And, right? <laughs> but I stuck with it the whole time, got in. So that's my, uh, uh, that's my thing. All right, Wayne, since we've already blown the 10-minute o'clock, uh, 10 minute mark, no need to mention on that. Uh, you know, uh, what is it? The views expressed. Yeah, chances are pretty good if you're listening to any other views on the show. They don't represent necessarily the views of our sponsors, Media, and also Certifiable Brilliance. So there you go. There's the disclaimer. All right, Wayne, what are we going to – what's the segment that you and I were laughing about? And I have to tell you, Wayne, I owe you, as I often do, a round, uh, uh, a round of applause, right? At least a drum roll. Every time you send a graphic, I just smile. When you go – uh, thoughts, question mark, question mark. And I open my email and I'm like, you have got to be kidding me. That's what you came up with. So let's run with the second one. Oh, oh you know what, Wayne? Do you want to run with this or should we open the phones today so we can get other people's horror stories? Let's what do you want to do first? Let's open the phones first. And then as soon as we open the phones, then we'll go back into this. All right. That sounds great. Let's do that. The phone lines are open. Now's your chance to mortal up and give Brian a shout because your opinion deserves to be heard. Dial toll free 1 833 Mortal 1. That's 833 M O R T A L 1. And don't forget, you can also text us at that number, 833-667-8251, if you like the hieroglyphics. And also, uh, this is a new feature that Wayne's been working on. If you want to send an email, if it's easier for you to email, you want to come right into the studio uh, where we are, where Wayne at, Wayne's in one studio, I'm in another studio, right? But if you want to send us an email, it's bry or sorry, Brian at radiobry.com. So Brian with an I, Brian at radiobry.com, and it will come directly to me here at the console. All right, Wayne, so without further ado, <laughs> your latest, lo- not, not your latest, because you've got two or three of them today that are just amazing, uh, but to let, keep with all the lingo, uh, Wayne, let's go ahead and drop your uh, latest logo. Oh, right. I, you know what, Wayne? I think I agree with you. Believing in Election Day now places us right up there (laughs) with the certainty of a Loch Ness Monster. I absolutely agree with you, Wayne, because here's the thing. These poor people in line, right, all over, they're going to be there forever. So I'm really fired up. Friends of mine have said, oh, I was there for five minutes, so I got in and out in under 15 and this and that. Not in the great state of, oh, how I'm out of here. It most certainly doesn't apply to when you're waiting in line today to cast your vote if you live in Franklin County. So here's the thing. All the brainiacs in the media, all the brittle brains atop balsa wood spines calling themselves reporters are going, oh, this thing will never be called by midnight, never be called by midnight. So with the Supreme Court, I think I read yesterday, Supreme Court says, nah, you can you can count votes for a couple of weeks. Don't even, well, there's nothing, just keep counting. If you get votes, you find votes, you just keep counting them. So why do we even call it Election Day? I believe it's a myth. Just like, what is it, Tessie? What is the Loch Ness Monster's name? Does anybody know? Tessie? Lockie? Nessie? Oh, <laughs> Why that makes sense? Nessie, the Loch Ness Monster. <laughs> oh, my mind. I can't tell you. But in any event, right? So you're going to be able to count votes forever. We shouldn't call it Election Day. We should say, right, we should call it Election Week or Election Month. Whatever it's going to be, like stop it. saying Election Day. I believe month is more like it because that's what's been going on. Okay, election month. Shane, thank you very much. It's Nessie. Yeah, which <laughs> one would thought I would have figured that out on my own. But no, Shane, you've known me for a while now. <laughs> I'm still brain damaged. All right, so wh- uh, no offense to anyone that is also brain damaged, right? It's just my unique version of brain damaged uh, is what I'm saying. Patricia says the best part of voting was finding uh, provisional ballots get counted last. Really, Patricia? See, I didn't know that. So so if you go in and you're like, hey, the polls are closed, they tally, not machines, not where I live, they're not going to get to the machines because they were made in China and they malfunctioned. Uh, Patricia says months uh, through 1214 when the great electors vote. Oh, she's got a good point there, Wayne, the Electoral College, 
right? If everyone, if all the rules or however that works, people going in and saying, yeah, um, you know, you win a state, you win uh, their electors, but the electors still get together. So Patricia's got a good point. It's like a 45-day free-for-all, right? We try to distill it down, like in the movie Caddyshack, for the 15 minutes a year they allow the caddies uh, in the members' private pool, right? We try to distill it down for that. But that's what it's become. We're going to a break. All right. Oh, you're doing the Macarena. Are you doing the Macarena? Wait, no, it's break time. All right, let's get back on track. The 20. Portions of this broadcast have been pre-recorded. Why? Because you can't get these people to hit a call time. They're the worst. Nah, I'm just kidding. We love our guests. <laughs> and we do love our guests. Yes, we are having a blast. Thank you very much for the email. It is brian at radiobry.com. But you must know that because you just sent the email so that it got through. It was a great test. Thank you for keeping us honest. So here's the thing. And I know, Wayne, we're going to jump to a low life making headlines, and I'll let you decide. We can, because <laughs> there's so many, right? But let's do the serious one uh, that you know uh, uh, that we have picked for today, and then we'll do the other one of these ass hats that are going. Oh, you're not, you're not blood to me. You're not, you're, you're not my mom. I'm putting my dad up for adoption. He's not a dad to me if he doesn't vote the way I vote. We'll get to that a little bit later. But uh, what's our, let's do Low Life's Making Headlines to kind of bring this thing full on. Low Life's Making Headlines, or as we like to call it around here, brains that make your blood boil. Here's your brittle brain atop a balsa wood spine for today. Here's your brittle brain atop a balsa wood spine. Drum roll, Wayne, let's hit it. Oh, well, like making. Oh, yeah, I'm with you, Wayne. You're absolutely spot on from the New York Post. The brute. Hey, hey, here's the thing: a homeless uh, brute, I, 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 right? Just an asshat, shoved the 73 year old grandmother onto the subway tracks in Brooklyn after her grandson asked him to stop smoking. He's been arrested and charged with attempted murder. Cops sound money. Well, look, has any? Uh, now, I know Patricia, uh, probably other people here in the thread are listening over on YouTube or Twitter or wherever else. You've been on the subway in Brooklyn before, I would imagine. You shove anybody of any age, even someone in good athletic condition, you shove them onto the tracks. It is like attempting to kill them, I would believe. Brute busted for shoving a grandmother onto subway tracks. It says he's also charged with two counts of of assault in connection with the October 26th incident. We, we try to keep them timely. Now, to be honest with you, Wayne, this should have been a return to vendor segment. So let's just get into that before we run to the bottom of the hour. He was charged uh, uh, with two more counts of assault at uh, the Sea Trains Clinton Washington stop. Wow, well, that's, there you go. You better not tell anybody they can't smoke it with anyone's name Clinton on it. You're just asking for trouble, is all I'm saying. But still, you don't get the push. A, a, a 70 you don't get to push anybody onto the subway tracks it should be a return to vendor the only reason we're not going to push for return to vendor is i think the woman survived i don't it was right the charge was attempted murder but here's a grandson but note to self if you're going to tell someone not to smoke in your face make sure you got the spine to cover that order Right. Just just don't go walking up and talking to someone going, hey, do you mind not blowing that smoke in my face? You better be able and ready to open up a can of whoop ass. It's just it's never going to work out well for you if you can't. But nonetheless, low life's making headlines. If you push another human being, if you do something to injure another human being or to threaten their lives because they simply asked you not to blow secondhand cigarette smoke in their face, which to be honest with you, Wayne, it's as annoying. I haven't been on an airplane in a, in a, in a little bit, but ever been on an airplane and someone's talking on their cell phone and all I ever do anymore is I repeat the exact same thing they were just saying, right? So instead of secondhand cigarette smoke, it's like secondhand asshat chatter. Right, where your ears, you just can't get rid of it. They just keep talking and talking and talking. So I repeat what they're saying verbatim back so they think there's an echo. And then they'll turn and they'll look at you and go, excuse me, sir, it's a private phone call. Then shut up. Not so private if I'm able to repeat it for you, is it, jackass? In any event, right? You just go, okay, great, fine, groovy. So if you're going to say, hey, please don't blow smoke our way, as one would have every right to, forget the fact you're standing up for your elderly grandmother. 
you deserve the low lifes making headlines. Thank goodness no one was murdered because then, uh, well, for uh, in addition to a hundred other things, you'd be getting a return to vendor because you have a depraved indifference to human life uh, and uh, you qualify for the DNA that needs to go back. All right, Wayne, what else is going on in your world? I see you're kicking around today. Uh, anything else new and exciting I haven't checked in on? No, like I said, I haven't had much time to because there's so much going on. Right. Uh, you know, and, and this is going to be me tonight while I'm watching. <laughs> so, wait a minute. It's going to be you, but where are your, like, your, your Funyuns? I get Funyuns, pork rinds, some chips, and I make sure I have a case of uh, hell of a good French onion dip. Right? We can do that. So, uh, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with that. And then, of course, whatever beverage of choice, whatever beverage uh, you want to drink. I would be it. But anything else going on uh, in Wayne's world? Wayne's world. Wayne's world. Now, uh, how are, are you preparing for the election tonight? This Things are pretty quiet in Michigan right now. Mm-hmm. Not much going how's on. How's Governor uh, uh, Melissa Alano? Alyssa Milano? Melissa Alano, whatever her name is. How's she doing? Uh, you know, they're trying to uh, ban guns at the polling places. <laughs> yeah, I bumped into that this morning. They put uh, the but- sign behind me. I was already in line, and some brainiac walks up and puts in a yard sign. Like 10 people behind me, you're not allowed to carry handguns in. But again, the oh, that's a little Supreme bit of a Court too ruled, late. ruled that uh, Whitmer and the Attorney General don't have the legal authority to put that rule in place because that's up to the legislature. Uh, well, another reason that I say Ohio, the acronym stands for Oh How I'm Out of Here. Unless, of course, I'm a mixed company, you know, there's little kids around, and I just say, oh, how it's overcast, right? Everyone thinks it's a meteorological statement that I'm trying to make. But I would love to live there where you're able to do that. But no, here was a big sign today. Uh, no, you're not allowed to do it, not allowed to bring them in. So I'm like, well, that's just groovy. Uh, so that was my uh, morning. And then I got in, and I saw the Made in China stylus for a machine I didn't say hijacked. I didn't say the machines were hijacked. I just said they were malfunctioning. <laughs> right, Wayne? But listen, uh-oh, uh, Wayne, I hate to interrupt. Hold on one second. <laughs> sure thing. <laughs> that one, this is even more breaking news than, uh... <laughs> and I love China. Look, I spent all that time in a cave in China. I love China. I really do. I don't know. It's just amazing to me. Okay, this just in, breaking news. Pelosi says House prepared, she's prepared to decide the election if results are disputed. The Democratic-led House of Representatives is ready to decide the 2020 presidential election. I want to sound like Ted Baxter on the Mary Tyler Moore Show. Remember that? Ted Baxter, I'm here with the news. Pelosi, a Democrat from California. She's a Democrat from California? Well, now it's all making sense to me. Uh, was speaking to National Propaganda Radio uh, and their show, All Things Considered, in the podcast, when she made the remark that after being asked about multiple doomsday scenarios, hey, Wayne, uh, this would be an opportune time to mention that I'm on Doomsday Prepper on Netflix for everyone that hasn't canceled it over cuties. I've never even seen the show, uh, to be honest with you. Um, <laughs> but in any event, <laughs> well, Doomsday just made it pop to mind. Thank you all uh, so very much over on YouTube for all all the kind things that you say about uh, uh, about the Doomsday Prepper show. I appreciate it. Uh, Patricia asks, what is she uh, What is she smoking? Great question. Who not? Look, she's got designer ice cream. Maybe she's got designer. Or she's had so many facelifts that even the scarf isn't holding the, 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 the lines. I don't know anymore, uh, to be honest, Patricia. Uh, Shane said, maybe I misunderstood. Shane, that happens to me all the time. I thought it was a federal law about guns in voting places. No, I do remember. I think, Wayne, you were right where they said you couldn't, um, that the attorney general couldn't mandate uh, the restriction of the open carry in Michigan. Am I correct? Yes. State laws. Okay, very good. Thank yeah, you. It's, it's so here's, Michigan uh, here's, does not have a, uh, there, there is no state law banning. There is no state law banning, which, you know, this always goes back to me, and this will only get us in trouble. Oh, you know what, Wayne, let's run to the bottom of the hour. And then I'll give you a short laundry list of all the things I normally get in trouble for. But that's our breaking news gone for the day. Just like Alexander Haig, after Reagan was shot, and he got to the podium and said, I'm in control to the vice president's plane lands. So apparently, Nancy, smoke him if you got it. Uh, Pelosi has said, don't worry, I'll decide the election if it's contested. All right, we will be right back. 
You're listening to The Brian Brody Show. Why? Because you know the truth when you hear it. He'll be right back. Brody Show, brought to you by our good friends at Counterpunch Media and Certifiable Brilliance. It's time to buckle up. It's time to buckle up, and we're going to go straight into our clipboard of doom. Oh, well, let me thank uh, Counterpunch.media and also Certifiable Brilliance for being our sponsors. This just in to our clipboard of doom. Clipboard of doom? Yeah, clipboard of doom. <laughs> I thought we were going, oh, oh, please. Yeah, we're going to, right after we do the clipboard. All right, a little behind the scenes there of Wayne going, wait a minute, what are we queued up now? The clipboard of doom. Uh, this going out to my friends at the FBI, the Federal Bureau of Incompetence, or any other law enforcement agency. If a gunman posts a picture on his uh, social media page with an AK-47 and a machete, Chances are pretty good. You may want to go figure out what he's planning on doing next. Our clipboard of doom for today. Vienna Gunman posted chilling selfie prior to the shoot, shooting rampage that took absolutely everybody out. And uh, it's just disgusting. Now, you know what, Wayne? You're right. Maybe that should have been uh, the return of Vendor for today. Uh, what an absolute coward, right? Talk about a never human uh, bully, this guy. So, yeah, to any law enforcement that may be listening, Machine gun plus a machete equals probably not the greatest guy in the world. You may want to swing by, check him out, do a little recon, see what's going on. All right, Wayne, I know we haven't. Oops. I needed someone to interpret the 12th Amendment. Pelosi might be right. No, well, I don't think you need the interpretation. I think she, what we were trying to say, Patricia, is that she's just jumping the gun. <laughs> right? She's just jumping the gun. Let it just, right? But she's ready. She's got her freezer full of uh, designer ice cream pints ready to go. Um, Ready to go. Came to vote. Machine up. Oh, wow. All right. So, Wayne, let me get, uh, also tell you this. I just got an email in. The machines now in Franklin County are up and running. Still was a great, great while it lasted. Uh, uh, the machines are up. And uh, my friend that texted me uh, is seventh in line. Easy peasy. Yeah, wait till you get inside. <laughs> but thank you very much for the text. All right, Wayne, let's hit our next segment. Oh, please. Enough. Why not give it a rest already? No one around here is drinking your Kool-Aid. You know, that's actually wild, Wayne. I was taking a drip of pop, and I'm thinking, wow, is my gulp coming across on air? And it was the gulp of the thing, so I forgot all about that. All right, so here's our O, oh, please. And let me just say this. Let me give Wayne another drum roll uh, before he does it, because when he sends me an email, I'll go, okay, what do you think about this one? I just always take a deep breath and get ready to laugh because it's his creativity is amazing. All right, Wayne, let's go ahead and drop your next creation. Oh, please. Oh, right. So here's what it is. Now, I know you're going to say right away, Bri, you don't like pink house slippers? I've never been a fan of women in pink house slippers with the matching colored uh, clam diggers, right? I've never, I've just, I've never, knickers, I think is what they call them, just never been a good look. But let's just say that it's not about the way uh, the people are dressed. But this, oh, please. And here's what I want to talk to you about. I have people that are very dear to me that believe exactly the opposite of what I believe, right? I, the exact opposite of what I believe politically. Probably philosophically probably this or that. But their opinions are not the person, right? If you're a person, you have an opinion. We may differ on opinions, but I don't differ on the person with the opinions. So all of this in the Reuters, Wayne, I think I sent the link. I'll see if I can find it, but Reuters did a big thing. I got in a dust-up over on Spitter earlier well my earlier dust up was with brian stelter 
when he's, uh, he's, he's slamming President Trump, calling him fat little lies, to which I thought, wow, a fat little liar, that's got to be rich, calling someone else uh, or saying someone else uh, distributes fat little lies. But that's not it. The Reuters story that I'm talking about is that the growing number of people that say, well, ever since President Trump uh, became president, the growing number of people that have disowned their daughters, right? The growing number of people that say, you're not my mother anymore. Look, let me just cut to the chase and and say exactly what I said on Twitter. Unless, Wayne, you have Twitter up, can you just read, if you want to read the tweet, uh, I don't even remember what I said, but something to this effect. Look, asshat. If you're going to break off all communication with your own mother, your own brother, your own sister, your own father, your own friends, because they have a different political opinion than you, breaking news, breaking news, wish I had more breaking news gong things queued up, breaking news, they're better off with you gone, right? If you're such that you can disavow a family member, a good friend, if you can disavow Someone that means quite a bit to you. And these people that want to disavow their moms. Look, this woman worked her ass off to get at least here in life, right? And you're going to disavow your mom because she votes for a different politician than you? Who are you, this young lady the other day screaming that she hoped the cop's daughters or cop's children were raped and murdered? What are you, this little brainiac, this little rocket scientist? Science! Science! Right. So, oh, please cut me some slack. If you, let me just say, let's make sure we get this, Wayne, just so that we're right on this. If you disavow a parent because they have a different political opinion than you, this is the greatest day in the history of the world because your parents have a better life with you not in it. I couldn't be more emphatic. Your parents are like, yes, I think you should volunteer to be one of the first people to live on to try to colonize Mars. Right? I think if you disavow your own flesh and blood over a political statement, and that just shows you what's happened in this country, Wayne. Right? People can't, well, I, can't, I could never get along with that person. Why? Well, he voted for this or voted for that. Look, they're opinions. They're not the person themselves, you dipshit. Now, that, I, in fairness, Wayne, I should have cued you in that that one was coming because that would have been one that probably zap right so would you say you dip it but but you've got you've got the tablet there you can beep yourself yeah i didn't put a beep yeah i right i wouldn't feel good beeping myself i could just uh what can i do oh no not crickets vending machine now we already did vending machine auto brakes that's what i'll do next time i'm gonna say dip shit i'll just have the i'll go dip uh, right uh overrun (laughs) (laughs) if you can disavow a parent you moron over who they decided to cast a vote for they are better off without you oh please join the circus already right i can imagine the parents are so proud of this young lady that was taunting the cops uh, on the on the on the front line when they were trying to push back the riot and this lady says she wishes all their children were raped and murdered really good i get an idea all you people we're talking to the Reuters reporters and going, well, I'm disavowing my mom, right? Just pack it in. Go take up bungee jumping and forget to secure your rope, right? Oh, I have another favorite one. I say go take up high-speed automobile racing without a vehicle that has either an airbag or some safety belts and head into the forest. All I'm saying is your parents are better off without you. If you could swear them off, Wayne, just because you don't like, Jack says, Mars ain't the kind of place to raise your kids. No, not Mars, Pennsylvania, Jack. I know what you're thinking. Not Mars. That's very funny. Not Mars, Pennsylvania. I meant Mars the planet. Maybe they can get with Elon Musk and shuttle some of these brainiacs that would disavow their own family members. Some uh, Shuttle some of these brainiacs up. But that's what I think is happening, Wayne, in this country. And I don't want to turn it into a mortal up minute, but everyone's so full of road rage. Because they're sick of their pathetic interpretation, right? Oh, this is my theory on life. You are your thoughts. No, you're not. Well, you are your theories. No, you're not, asshat. Oh, well, you are the things you believe. No, you're not. Those are things your brain conjures up. You're drinking the Kool-Aid, right? You're figuring out, oh, yeah, this is what's going to make me look cool. 
right? This is what's going to make me look uh, uh, great. So I'll just adopt this position. But that's not you. And it's most certainly not the people you're targeting. So I I think I've I've probably kicked it around enough. Oh, please. Uh, Let's just all admit that if you disavow your own parents, or parents for that matter, if you disavow your own kids, unless you're the one that this girl that was calling for cops' kids uh, to be raped and murdered, please disavow her. I'm sorry, I didn't even get her name, or she'd have been low life's making headlines uh, today for certain. Uh, But if you can disavow a family member because you don't like who they voted for, what the hell happened to you? Right? You have such a depraved indifference to human life. If you drink the Kool-Aid and you believe that you are your thoughts, I wish you all the misery you could possibly bring down around yourself because you're bringing it down in boatloads. All right, Wayne. So now that we've had a little bit of time, we're getting in. Jack says, oh, Mars. I kind of played, not Mars, Pennsylvania, just outside of Pittsburgh. I played him in football when I was in high school. Um, uh, Wayne, what else is going on? Anything new and exciting? Well, I believe everybody heard about that story about the Trump supporters surrounding Biden's truck or bus. Yeah, what happened with that? Well, and they tried to blame a Trump supporter for causing an accident. As one would. As one would. (laughs) For causing an accident. Well, I just happened to see some video last night (laughs) of that accident. And it was a Biden supporter that crossed into the lane of the black truck which had the trump flag on it oh and rammed the side of him and then pulled back out again no yeah well personal little side note here maybe he didn't have those lane uh warning alarms that lets him know when he rams he side swipes <laughs> another vehicle you know what i mean yeah maybe. or he probably should have stayed off his cell phone Probably should have stayed on to try to get a selfie of himself in the Biden uh, thing, right? Yeah. But can I ask you a question? If you are involved in an accident, aren't you supposed to pull over? Now, I know everyone's saying, Brian, you're obeying vehicle and traffic laws. No, as my good friend, dear friend Patricia reminded me earlier, I was scurrying. I was scampering. I wasn't necessarily breaking the speed limit. Um, aren't you supposed to pull over if you sideswipe another car? It's supposed to. <laughs> so now they figured out uh it was a, po- a polite escort <laughs> jack says i like that that's very nice go here let me show you the way i have to tell you wayne i don't know maybe if anyone else knows hey well you know what it just dawned on me we're still waiting on your horror stories uh you can give us a call it's toll free 833 m-o-r-t-a-l and the numeral one the hieroglyphics of it 833-667-8251 thank you so very much for the text, I appreciate it. Don't forget, you can hit us up. Email will come straight through brian at radiobry.com. That would be great. Give us a holler. Let us know what you're thinking. This little bit, and we won't do the, the, the breaking news thing because we'll run out of time if we do, but uh, over on our New York Post, which I've got grown accustomed to, Wade. I know not everyone likes the New York Post, but I like some of their other stories. Here's one. Footage captures a shocking moment where a whale nearly swallows two kayakers. Uh, They almost reenacted Pinocchio. Two California whale watchers got a closer look than perhaps intended when they were nearly swallowed by a whale. One of the kayakers says, I still have an adrenaline rush. Now, I love to kayak, and I love to kayak in the waters of California. What gets me at times is that when people act like animals in nature, are not supposed to act like animals in nature, right? Like, I've gotten to the point, Wayne, where I root for the bison, right? Public service announcement, this just in. If you're in Yellowstone and you think it's a good idea to take a selfie and you turn your back to the bison, if the next thing you feel and the very next thing you see is one of its horns coming through your back into your stomach, you don't be shocked. Don't be surprised. You know, people say, oh, I go to Alaska. I can't believe that grizzly bear. Oh, this guy running out in the mountains. I can't believe that mountain lion chased me. Wait for it. Wait for it. They're animals. They're going to act like animals. So I'm glad to see that everybody in the kayaking community was safe. Um, uh, When the whale almost swallowed them. I've never seen Pinocchio. I would have said Jonah. You know, terribly biblical of me, I know. I would have said Jonah in the whale. Uh, but uh, they said they almost reenacted Pinocchio 
Wait, have you ever seen Pinocchio? Was that the key? They, uh, <laughs> Pinocchio was swallowed. I thought he had a long nose. He did. Oh, so how did that go down? Did he like extend the nose when he went into the whale's mouth, or am I totally missing it? Well, it depends, I guess, on what he was saying on his way in. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. Man, <laughs> I never knew your breath smelled so bad, Mr. Whale. Man, maybe his nose didn't grow. But in any event, for the New York Post, thank you very much for that. And uh, like I said, the public service announcement, just make certain uh, that when you're out in the wild, you'll know that animals are are going to act like animals. When you're out in their habitat, when you're out in their train, like a moose, people that go, oh, I would love to go see a moose. And then they're stunned. Or these brainiacs, right? Uh, no, I'm not saying that everyone that hunts does this, but these guys that hunt, that cover themselves in deer urine, right, in order to track in the does, and then the bucks come in and kick the crap out of them, are like, I don't, I don't know what happened. All I did was I just, you know, I don't know. I just covered myself in deer urine, and all of a sudden, right, some, a deer just came in and started hoofing me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to tell you, wait, I root. <laughs> I root for the I deer. The, I root for the deer in those stories. I got to tell you, I'm a horrible, hor I say it all the time, I'm a horrible human being, but I root for the deer. I remember one time, and I think I was a reporter for CBS at the time, but I either covered or was in the newsroom when a story broke about a woman that had been killed by wolves. Now, she was killed by the wolves because she broke in to a zoo overnight, scaled one fence and a moat, a second fence and an even deeper moat, into the wolf pen because she wanted her own little private dances with wolves in the moonlight moment. Guess what the wolves did? What did the wolves do? The wolves ate her. And now here's the tragedy of it all, I think. And if I remember correctly, it's coming back to me now. I think I, I have to ask my, my friend. I think I got in trouble for mentioning this. They went and shot the wolves. They went... And shot the wolves because their theory was the wolves had acquired a taste for human blood. No, they acquired the taste for asshat blood where someone would scale two fences, right? Scale two fences, two moats because she wanted her own private version of dances with wolves. And they went ahead and killed the wolves, right? I would have gone after our family. But that's just me. You know, I, I, I fall back in time. Remember Rodney Dangerfield in Back to School when he was at the football game? Right? Patricia says, immediate Darwin Award. Thank you, Patricia, very much. Shane, I want to swim with sharks, but I'm not so stupid. I'm not aware of how crazy it sounds. Nor would I be surprised if they decide to take a bite out of me. I can tell you, Shane, it's a bit scary. I'll give you that. Uh, it's not a shark, but I got nailed pretty good by a jellyfish over the summer. Uh, in, uh, 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 well, I won't say where I was, but I was in coastal waters of the U.S., got nailed by a jellyfish in the back of, the back of both legs and damn near didn't make it out of the water. Um, let me see. Shane says, probably in a cage. I'm crazy, not stupid. LOL. No, that would be good for you, brother. I would say a cage, dive in a cage, although the cage would have let the jellyfish in. I was screwed no matter what happened. But all I'm saying is don't expect animals to act like anything other than the way nature intended. And you get these people screaming, science, science, I want to follow science. Well, the science is a mountain lion will eat you if you turn your back on it. Here's another little science break for the day, you brainiac. The science says if you stumble up on a grizzly bear and you have your little jog stroller and your little tight skirt and your matching shoes pushing Junior around in the jog stroller and you happen to jog up to a female grizzly bear with three cubs, here's the science of it, Brainiac. The mom is going to eat you. So that's our public service announcement for today. All right, Wayne, what else do we got going? I just want to share that story about the two kayakers we talked about, Nancy. Oh, New York City voters grappling with insane, their quote, not mine, insane lines at Election Day polling sites. So, Wayne, maybe there's a little bit of truth to that. 
Maybe it is this whole thing about election day. We should make it, as Patricia reminds us, all the way through to the Electoral College. We should make it, right? But that's not good enough for advertisers. That's not good enough for the, for the uh, mainstream media. We got to be able to draw in people. We got to get, I'll watch till midnight. I know, I'm gullible. I'm one of the ones that will think, oh, maybe it could happen. Maybe it could happen. Right? Maybe if I leave cookies for Santa Claus, it could right, it could happen. Maybe if I leave a tooth under the pillow, a tooth fairy will come. Could happen. Never can tell. It might, may not, but it could, right? I have hope. Kid can hope, can he? So I'll stay up till midnight. I got plenty of French onion dip. I'll be ready. Uh, I'll be ready to go. Wayne, what are you doing this evening? Oh, uh, watching TV. <laughs> watching TV. <laughs> All right, so you'll be glued to what else MSNBC. Am I do? See ya. MSNBC ya. Right? Or oh, the Circus News Network. Be honest. You'll be watching Don Lyman. No, 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 no. Lemon? Lyman? Lamone. Speaking of Don Lamone and his little friend Brian Stelter, who I'm just sick of giving Brian's a bad name. Right? Just carte blanche. Every time he talks, just makes my skin crawl. Uh, what else will you be doing? Right? Like, will you be watching local polling? You know, I, 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 the two uh, elections I'm following, being from Chicago, I'm following Kim Fox's. Uh, the district attorney, the one that let Jesse Smollett walk, right? No, uh, and I'm, Adam actually. Shifty Shift's election out in California. I think he's up, too. I'll be watching uh, both of those. What else will you be watching? I believe it's called Newsnet. Newsnet or Newsmax? Newsnet. Newsnet. Oh, all right, great. Um, news. The reason I like to watch Newsnet, it's based out of mm-hmm. Travis City, Michigan. Oh, very nice. But they're national. They, they, but all they do is produce local news from around the country on their wow. different affiliates. There's no screen TV. Oh, wow. No opinion. Strictly just the news. No, and uh, you, you know someone there, don't you? Yep. A good friend of mine actually okay. owns it. Oh, that's great. Well, we'll give them, a, give them a shout out for sure. Let the people know what's going on and where that they can tune in. How about you? We have a, a few more minutes. We're going to have, we're going to leave the lines open for texts or email. Don't forget Brian at radiobride.com. You can text us 833-667-8251. Do you have a, do you have an election day story? It doesn't have to be a horror story. It can be a story about, yeah, I went, a friend of mine uh, texted me and said, went in, was there for five minutes, came out, Back home in 15 minutes. God love you. That's not the way it works here in Oh, how I'm out of here, Ohio. Uh, Wayne, have you heard any stories of things that are going on? No. Yeah. No? I don't know. Not, not any. Yeah, all right. Uh, I'm just getting this uh, text in. Done in less than 15 minutes. Stopped. Uh, and this particular friend is, oh, hanging out uh Uh, with his kids on the playground. Well, that's very nice. He was in and out in 15 minutes, all told. Very, very nice. All right, so we're just going to go over a couple little things here. Uh, Poll closing times, key races, critical battlegrounds will all be glued to the TV. And I think, as I've said before, Wayne, where we talked about, uh, you know, the greatest night in the history of television, tonight will be better than the debates, right? It just will be. And for everyone saying, Oh, what are we going to do? Records have been shattered, right? Everyone's voting. Everyone has. Great. I love it. Everyone's voting. No one could be happier uh, than than all of us, right? If everyone gets a chance to put in their say, let's just not try to kill each other afterwards. Um, uh, Biden is vowing now. Let's just see. I got this. Biden swarmed an election day stop in Pennsylvania, not by bees, apparently by, uh, okay, uh, vows to run through the tape. Uh, balance of power, top Senate races to watch will determine which party is in the majority. All right. Is anyone, you have any, uh, I should have taken some people's uh, polls. Do you think the, how do you think the Senate's going to go? How do you think the House of Representatives is going to go? Right now, I know everyone has an opinion of who's going to win uh, the presidency, but who do you think will win the House? Who do you think will win the Senate? Wayne, what say you? I believe the Senate's going to stay Republican. All right. Senate's going to stay Republican. All right. Uh, And because the numbers are so high uh, in the House, I believe the House is going to stay Democrat. You believe the House is going to stay Democrat. Okay. 
Uh, let me see. Is there anything else? Stock market history would suggest that Trump will defeat Biden. Now, I haven't read this story, so I don't know much about it, but I'm assuming it has something to do with what the stocks do day of or the day before or the week before, however, however that will work. But I, I have to say, Wayne, I'm super, super excited. Uh, and tomorrow morning, maybe we'll know. To Patricia's point, maybe we won't. It might take a couple days. Hopefully no hanging chads. Hopefully the machines in Franklin County are back up and running everywhere so you can get your cute little made-in-China stylus, right? <laughs> maybe. It could happen. You never can tell. All right, Wayne, let me thank some people before we get ready to get out of here. I want to thank uh, everyone for watching here on the feed in uh, Facebook. Yes, the Made in China foreign influence in the election 2020. Well, let's check uh, uh, Biden Hunton's laptop, see what that says. All right, so thank you to everyone at YouTube. Thank you to everyone here on Facebook. We super appreciate it. And I should mention the increase in numbers across the board. Thank you all so very much. If you're listening at RadioBry.com or MortalUp.com, uh, got some new news. We won't share it today. We'll wait till tomorrow. Some new news on the uh, registered trademark, Wayne. So maybe we'll talk about a little bit about that tomorrow. The clock is ticking. We can see the light at the end of the tunnel. If you're listening to the rebroadcast on Spotify, iTunes, or iHeartRadio, thank you so very much. We're super glad. Oh, and let me also say, and they didn't give me permission to use their name, Wayne, so I don't want to say this. Let me send a quick shout out to the person that was listening yesterday and sent me, sent the show a text saying, hey, I was listening to your show when my sister walked in and she went ahead and started to follow you on YouTube. So thank you very much for that. And Wayne, before I go, you, you want to give us a quick rundown? What's it take to follow us on YouTube? Where do people got to go? Can they get there from the RadioBry.com page? What, give me some of the nomenclature. Yes, they can. They can get to it uh, from the RadioBry.com page. Just click on the video and there's a button to subscribe. To subscribe. Okay, cool. Uh, to the YouTube channel. Or they can go to YouTube slash Counterpunch Media. Oh, great. And they can su subscribe there. Or they can go and go to the Brian Brody YouTube page. Oh, and all right. We, we pull in the Counterpunch Media videos. So if they watch the videos on the Brian Brody page, they can click on the button and subscribe to Counterpunch Media. Oh, very nice. Well, thank you for setting it up that way. That's good. Yeah, the old Brian Brody page is back in the day when I was running around the country chasing wolves and mountain lions and grizzly bears and what and uh, and whatnot. So a little bit of nostalgia for that page. A lot of stuff about the Lance Camper. Henry, thank you so very much, brother. We super appreciate it. Miss talking to you. You'll have to call in sometime. Hang out with us for a while. Henry says, great job, guys. Let me thank everyone that's been riding this out with us. 533 is today's episode number. Of course, it's Make Your Mark. And we picked Make Your Mark. Why? Because today, did you vote? Did you get out? and say what you wanted to say about the direction that you want this country to go in. You and I both know we're going to wake up tomorrow morning. Whoever wins, whoever they think will win, wake up tomorrow, next week, next month. Whoever they think, whoever ends up being the winner, you and I will square our shoulders with that fate. We'll mortal up, and we'll make life dovetail to what we want. Have an absolutely fantastic election night. Wayne? Thanks for listening to The Brian Brody Show. Until next time, get out there and mortal up.